So folks, one of the things that you guys point out all the time, and I note this frequently, that I have some of the sharpest, brightest viewers on this platform, but one of the things you've been noticing for a while, I have too, is that people are getting sick and tired of old Donnie's old tricks. Whether it's judges, whether it's prosecutors, whether it's investigators, whether it's observers, in a way that he used to get away with things, if only partially, now it's not working anymore. That old Donnie is quickly finding out, and his lawyers are too, that the same BS isn't flying. And this is connected to yet even more breaking updates from the massive news last night around people in old Donnie's circle either flipping on him or being compelled to testify against him, and how this is a sign that the DOJ is tired of playing around and they're going forward, and how judges at that level are starting to acknowledge that more needs to be done and that clearly there's information here that needs to be obtained for a fair investigation. Everyone's sick and tired of Trump BS at that level. You also saw it in state level court just minutes ago as a judge told Trump and his legal team to get their stupid BS out of his courtroom and actually have a real adult discussion, something they haven't been doing as of yet. Glorious to see the BS getting called out and we'll break that down after the clip. Friends with Clarence Thomas, a conspiracy to overthrow the presidential election, had their eye on the most publicly compromised member of the Supreme Court in the court's history as their last best hope because they could not use rifles. Leading off our discussion tonight is Glenn Kirshner, a former federal prosecutor and an MSNBC legal analyst who has been following the Oath Keepers trial from inside the courtroom. Also with us, Bradley Moss, national security attorney. Uh, and Glenn, I want to begin with immunity. Uh, the, this situation now where Cash Patel has immunity, has to go back in uh, to the grand jury. He does not have Fifth Amendment protection anymore. Of course, he doesn't have immunity from perjury. If he commits perjury in his testimony, then he can be charged with crimes. But what else does it mean to this investigation that someone who was personally involved with the documents once they arrived in Florida now has immunity to testify? You know, it suggests to me, Lawrence, the Department of Justice is focusing on Donald Trump. That's why they're willing to immunize Cash Patel. You know, it's it's interesting because immunity is not ordinarily the prosecutor's friend, because when you immunize somebody, you're essentially giving them a pass for their own crimes. And then you're going to ask a jury in the future to credit them, believe them when they testify about the crimes of others. Let me tell you, that makes for some robust defense cross-examination of an immunized witness. But the Department of Justice, first of all, litigated the issue of whether Cash Patel's invocation of his Fifth Amendment right was legitimate or not. We can tease something out of that. What we can tease out is it was probably a relatively minor crime that they were dealing with, one where there was an open question as to whether Cash Patel should be allowed to invoke his fifth. But once a judge ruled he has a viable fifth, then the Department of Justice had to make the decision. Do we have enough to charge him and try to develop him as a cooperating witness with a guilty plea and cooperation agreement? Or should we immunize him so we can work our way closer to Donald Trump? It looks like they went the immunity route. That may be good for Cash Patel, but boy, is it bad for Donald Trump. Uh, Bradley Moss, uh, your reaction to this immunity deal? Yeah, if I'm Donald Trump, this is the last thing I want to see, because now Cash Patel has no way to avoid testifying. He invoked his Fifth Amendment, first, uh, sorry, his Fifth Amendment right to uh, avoid testifying the first time. Now he's been immunized. He's going to have to talk to the grand jury. He's going to have to describe what he saw, what he knew about uh, Donald Trump's awareness of the document's existence, what he actually saw in witness in terms of any declassification efforts and what he knew about uh, efforts to relocate or conceal the boxes and the records within the boxes once that investigation had started and once the issue had been subpoenaed. This is one more material fact witness that the government has lined up as part of this grand jury presentation 
to bring what I expect at some point in the next few months to be an indictment against Donald Trump for Espionage Act and for obstruction charges. Uh, Glenn, I imagine in your experience as a federal prosecutor uh, with immunity deals that there are witnesses like Cash Patel uh, who get immunity and then go in. So I just wanted to kind of bring that in because the, you can't separate these things like the approach of the DOJ finally starting to do things finally making this push, getting a judge to agree to have this compelled testimony. All of this is everyone at the federal level. Again, sick and tired, guys, of the time wasting, of the humming and hawing, of the people wasting everybody's time, right? Not just Trump, but people like Patel being called in to originally testify and basically wasting everyone's time. Now we're actually getting down to the nuts and bolts there. And you're seeing the same thing in the state level case, because Donald Trump's lawyers are literally trying to change the definition of words trump and his legal team they are trying to change the definition of words in front of a judge and he called out their bs in epic fashion the reporters in the room were shocked by how hard the judge slammed them when it says state supreme court justice arthur angeron reportedly admonished an attorney for former president donald trump after he changed the definition of objectively in a hearing on thursday trump attorney chris keiss objected to the the potential appointment of a court monitor that has been requested after the former president created a new company that could be used to shield his wealth from court rulings. James's office is suing the Trump organization for alleged real estate fraud. Here we go, Colin Kalmbacher reported from the Thursday hearing, an actual upbraiding from the court for the Trump organization. Objectively, according to whom, Chris Keis asked the judge, objectively doesn't mean according to anybody. Objectively means objectively. And Garon replied. Kalmbacher noted that the New York Attorney General's office previously accused the Trump organization of using objectively false factual assumptions like inflated square footage. And Garon has indicated that he may rule on the need for a coin appointed monitor for the Trump organization on Thursday. And so what's happening here is the Trump BS is gotten so stinky, guys, that even judges who as their job you know, have to try to be as calm as they can, can't put up with this anymore. He just couldn't handle the stinkiness of the BS guys. They're trying to change the definition of words. I can't believe we're at this stage. Objectively means like factually versus subjectively, which means there's a matter of opinion. So when you look at a piece of art, you may subjectively think it's beautiful or it's ugly or it's interesting or it's boring. But when you look at that art and say objectively, that art, the frame is one meter long or three feet long. The art was made in this year. The art was painted by this artist. Those are objective facts. And so when Donald Trump is saying, what is the meaning? And his lawyers are saying, what's the meaning of objective? Well, the meaning of objective is you said your apartment was this size when you wanted to have low taxes. But then when you were trying to get loans, you said it was three times bigger than it actually was was so you could go to the bank and get bigger loans based on the valuation of your property that's an objectively false statement when you say that you know that you can build residential properties on some of your holdings but you don't actually have the permits to do so and it's not licensed for residential and or commercial building but you're factoring that into the evaluation that is objectively false when you're saying that it's been valued like this but you're doing it so out of whack that it doesn't make sense you've gone beyond subject subjective evaluation and now you're going absolutely into objective falsely facts falsification of the facts that's what's happening here and so you're seeing it the bs guys everyone's sick of it doj sick of it federal judges increasingly are sick of it and what donald trump's been doing and what he's been encouraging via his thugs we've covered that a ton where federal judges like the ones dealing with the patel case have said in some of their rulings that so long as donald trump keeps spreading his bs Yes, it's going to cause more violence. And that's not to excuse the people that they give heavy sentences to in some cases. That's not necessarily the point. But they are saying that the Trump BS is so bad, it's so polluting that it's absolutely corrosive, not only to democracy, but apparently to the dictionary now. So this is great to see Trump lawyers and Trump being told to take their BS and get it out of court objectively means objectively and objectively Donald Trump's in trouble.